Biden kills Senate resolution to end Yemen genocide. Bernie Sanders has withdrawn his bill to end U.S. support for the Saudi war on Yemen following reports that the Biden administration was working to tank the resolution with White House aides saying they'd recommend vetoing it. Anti-wars Dave DeCamp reports, quote, Senator Bernie Sanders on Tuesday night withdrew his request to vote on the Yemen War Powers Resolution that would end U.S. report for the Saudi-led war and blockade on Yemen, citing White House opposition to the bill. Sanders said on the floor that he was informed ahead of the scheduled vote of the administration's opposition to the legislation, meaning President Biden would veto the resolution. The Intercept reported earlier in the day that the White House was pressuring senators to vote against the bill, and Democrats came out in opposition to Sanders' resolution earlier on Tuesday, including Senator Alex Padilla. Sanders' justification for not holding the vote was that the administration claimed it would work with Congress on ending the war in Yemen. He said the White House wanted to work with us on crafting language that would be mutually acceptable and insisting that if it didn't happen, he would resume his efforts to end the war through a resolution. But even if the White House really wants to engage with Congress on the issue, or if Sanders chooses to reintroduce the resolution, the plan will take time, which Yemenis don't have. There has been a cessation in violence in Yemen, with no Saudi airstrikes since March, but there has been a recent uptick in fighting on the ground, end quote. It's probably also worth noting that this administration has been consistently lying about its intentions to end this war, with Biden campaigning on the promise to bring peace to Yemen and make a pariah of Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, then turning around and keeping the war going while greeting the Crown Prince with a friendly fist bump ahead of a meeting where the two leaders coordinated their government's continued intimacy. Today I withdrew from consideration by the U.S. Senate my War Powers Resolution after the Biden administration agreed to continue working with my office on ending the war in Yemen, Sanders said on Twitter. Let me be clear. If we do not reach agreement, I will, along with my colleagues, bring this resolution back for a vote in the near future and do everything possible to help end this horrific conflict. At which time the House, under GOP control, will block your efforts, Former Congressman Justin Amash replied, But you know that already, as does the Biden administration, which is why they don't want you to pass the joint resolution now, when all the pressure is on the president, because his party currently controls. What I'm acknowledging is both R's and D's in government are addicted to war, Amash added. They're playing a game. When Trump was president, everyone knew he wouldn't sign a Yemen joint resolution, so it passed Congress. Biden has to pretend he'd sign it, so he needs Congress to block it. Indeed, it would appear that a determination was made that the war in Yemen is too important for its outcome to be left to the legislative branch. Experts have long acknowledged that the mass atrocities in that war-ravaged nation would be forced to end if the U.S. and its allies stopped assisting the Saudi military in perpetrating them, and Biden could have done so on day one of his presidency, but... As Vox's Alex Ward put it last year, doing so would risk losing Riyadh as a key regional partner. Saudi Arabia plays a key role in both U.S. fossil fuel interests and in fighting Iran, and that's clearly a geostrategic asset that Washington is unwilling to relinquish. So now we're looking at a best-case scenario where either A, the worst mass atrocity on Earth continues for a much longer time than it would have if Sanders' bill had passed, or B, we get a watered-down version of the resolution. And of course there's the other scenario where neither of those things happen and the slaughter just continues for the foreseeable future completely unabated. In the lead-up to the vote, The Intercept's Daniel Boguslaw and Ryan Grimm reported on the shenanigans coming from the White House to undermine the resolution. Their article about the bill currently reads as follows, The White House, according to sources involved in the fight over the resolution, is urging senators to vote against the resolution. The White House is arguing that a vote in favor is unnecessary because, despite the lapse of ceasefire, significant hostilities have not yet resumed, and the vote will complicate diplomacy. 
They are also arguing that Biden has made significant progress in reducing violence and reopening ports and airports, so his judgment should be respected and the resolution rejected. And finally, the White House has warned that some of the arguments being made could complicate the effort to back Ukraine in its war against Russia. A White House spokesperson did not immediately respond to a request for comment, end quote. So efforts to end the war in Yemen needed to be sabotaged because they might complicate the U.S. proxy war against Russia? That's some uh, interesting logic. It is hard to think of a word to describe all this besides evil. If intervening to ensure the continued mass starvation of children and mass military slaughter of civilians is not evil, then nothing is evil. It's actually hard to think of anything more evil. This could be called a tripartisan crime, with both Democrats, Republicans, and Independent Sanders each playing a role in making sure the war in Yemen keeps going. Libertarian Scott Horton, one of the most forceful critics of the U.S. role in the war, had harsh words for supposedly anti-interventionist Republicans for not doing more on this front. I blame Rand Paul, Horton tweeted. He's supposed to be young Ron in the Senate, and with more willingness to rumble. He could have been championing this resolution all along. We know he knows about the war. He's why we had to rely on Bernie Sanders and his friends to even try. Mike Lee, too. There was not a single GOP co-sponsor in the Senate. Not one. It's safe to say that in a nation which serves as the hub of an empire that's held together with endless violence and the threat thereof, anyone who sends to a certain level of power in any party is going to have to be a servant of mass military slaughter to some extent. That's why efforts to save Yemen keep getting stonewalled. That's why Biden's promise to end that war turned out to be a lie. That's why the U.S. war machine keeps expanding. That's why aggressions keep ramping up against Russia and China. And it just might end up being why the human species went the way of the dinosaur. Here's hoping that all changes soon.